Hello everybody, welcome to Storytime with Bridie. Today we're going to read... Tawa, do you want to tell them? The Witch and the Cherry Tree. The Witch and the Cherry Tree by Margaret Mahi. Now today Tawa is dressed as an elephant and Rata is here and he's sort of a spaceman today. Well, okay. I'm a here normal person with a space book actually, kids. <laughs> okay, <laughs> the Witch and the Cherry Tree. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. One damp, dull day, David's mother was baking cakes. High over the city, a witch, whirling like a lonely cinder, smelled the warm and friendly smell of baking. For years, the witch had only had cakes baked by other witches. They tasted terrible. Witches can't cook. Making spells spoils them for ordinary cooking. All their cake pans taste of damp and rust. Cakes, muttered the witch. Look, here she is flying down here. And can you see in the window here? I can't believe here they are. she. Oh, do you reckon? I think <laughs> like a dark star falling through the clouds, she came down onto the flowering cherry on David's lawn. She perched there like a wicked black mm. parrot mm. and sniffed at the smell of baking. Mm. You should see what's come down into our cherry tree, said David. A witch is sitting out there smelling the cake smell. Oh, really, said his mother. Blow these witches. I just settled down to brighten a dull afternoon with some baking and a witch has to come and perch in the tree out there. Do you think we can protect the cakes? I think so, said David, but we must be very watchful. These witches are sly as well as greedy. At that exact moment, there came a knock at the door. David ran to open it. He peeked out carefully. Ah, good afternoon, said the witch. I am a great cake expert testing cakes in this part of the world. Your mother could win a medal with her name on it if I happen to approve of her cakes. I'll just come in and try a few mouthfuls. She waited to be invited in. David did not invite her. If you invite a witch in, she can stay as long as she likes. You might have a living in some cupboard forever. These cakes are family cakes, said David. They aren't witch cakes. He shut the door firmly. I like the way you put that, said his mother admiringly. The witch was furious, but she could not come in. She was so furious, she did a little rain dance out on the lawn and made it rain. The witch pranced on the lawn with frenzy, fury and fiery wickedness. She longed for fresh cakes. She could smell fresh cakes. With her witch ears, she could hear fresh cakes cooking, but the door was shut. No one invited her in. She could not get at the fresh cakes. David's mother went on measuring and mixing while her first batch of cakes cooled on the wire cake rack. The witch stood under the cherry tree, making a few magical gestures. A tent, striped in pink and white, appeared. The witch beat on a drum and started to shout, Great cake contest! Great cake contest! Bring out your new baked cakes and win a magical egg beater. Hear that? said David's mother. I can't I... see! Oh no! I could do with a man new magical egg beater. The magic's gone right old of my, out of my old one. Don't you realise that's just a witch being sly? cried David. Don't take any notice. You can't trust a witch to judge cakes. She'll just eat them and fly off laughing. I suppose you're right, dear, said David's mother meekly. Outside, the rain began to melt the witch's spell. The tent slipped down into pink and white puddles. The drum faded. The witch just stood there in the rain, with the water trickling over her hat brim and down her nose. David and his mother began to put the cake mixture into paper patty pans. Cakes with frills around their necks, exclaimed David. They worked happily while the hungry witch whinnied at the keyhole and squinnied through the windows. Now we're having thunder and lightning, said David's mother. That's the witch's doing, said David. She's cross at not getting in, but her magic won't work where it's light and warm and smells of baking. We'll put this tray of cakes in the oven now, said David's mother. These are mine on this little tray, David said. I'll slide it in here at the top. The smell of baking got stronger and warmer and browner. 
David looked out onto the lawn. A crumpled shape lay there like a broken black kite. The witch has fainted for lack of cakes, he cried. He did not want to be unkind, even to a witch. Shall I take a cake out to her, he asked, just to revive her a bit. Be careful, said his mother. You know how cunning witches are. David took the striped umbrella in one hand and a cake in the other. Quick as a cockabilly, he slid down the path and onto the cherry tree lawn. He bent over the crumpled witch. What wickedness! It was not the witch! It was her broomstick dressed up in her cloak and hat. The witch leaped down on David from her perch amongst the pink and white blossoms. Quickly, before she could cast a spell, David lunged at her with a striped umbrella. The witch was not expecting such bravery. She fell over backwards and lay there with her legs waving in the air. She looked like a beetle. Did she look like a beetle to you? No. <laughs> David scurried back inside to the warmth and the nice smell of baking. He was so upset, he had to eat a cake to calm himself. The witch picked herself up slowly. She cast a small, angry spell that turned the white daisies on the lawn pink. Then she perched up in the cherry tree again. She was sad. Foxed, sighed the witch. Foxed and out-foxed. She dangled her thin legs in their red witch stockings and watched the rain drip from the pointed toes of her shoes. She snuffled to herself. It's not much fun being a witch, she mumbled. Inside the kitchen, David and his mother were taking the new batch of cakes out of the oven. Mother's cakes were cooked a delicious brown, but David's were black on top. The oven must have been too hot for those top ones, said David's mother, but quite burnt. I've made witch cakes by accident, David said. Or do you think she made it happen? He looked out into the garden. He could see the witch's red legs and black shoes hanging out of the cherry tree. You can't tell with witches. He went to the door. Hey, witch, he called. Catch! We don't see. His cakes flew like blackbirds up into the cherry tree. The witch caught them with skillful ease. Inside the house, David and his mother sat down to enjoy their cakes. David's mother had coffee, and David had cold milk in one of the best tall glasses. They had a plate of cakes between them. We should wait until they cool properly, said David's mother, but I like them warm. Out in the cherry tree, the witch ate her cakes one by one. She liked them burnt. She preferred them burnt. That is the way witches like cakes. When she had eaten them, she felt much better. She felt sustained. That boy is certainly a marvellous cook, she said to herself. She got out of the cherry tree and picked up her broomstick. She did the rain dance backwards. The rain stopped. The clouds rolled back. Blue sky showed. The sun came out. Look at that, cried David's mother. A big black bird just flew up off our lawn. That was the witch, exclaimed David indignantly. Can't you tell a witch when you see one? I'm sorry, I just saw her from the corner of my eye, said his mother. The witch shot up into the sky like a rocket of darkness. Okay. Bump, bump, bump. Yeah, bump, thump, bump. Catching the storm. <laughs> Catching the storm, just as it left, she whirled away like a lonely cinder. The sun shone and David went out to play. Thank you very much for listening, everyone. Can I just say a quick hello to Rata and Tawa's cousins? So hello, Mila, and hello, Chloe, and hello, Oscar and Dara. We'll see you with another story tomorrow. Bye.